Hey there, this is Corinna Bench from Shared Legacy Farms and MyDigitalFarmer.com. And in today's video, I want to share with you a hack that I had to create that helps me organize all the different marketing assets that I have created over time in the last two and a half years. Now, if you become a content marketer like I am to help sell the stuff on your farm, then you're going to start to produce a lot of content. You're going to start making videos, you're going to be writing blog posts, you're going to be making PDFs and cheat sheets to help you, and you're going to be making lead pages and forms to get people into your funnel. And all of these things are a part of your marketing machine. They are what I call marketing assets. And as you make more and more of them, they kind of start to get away from you. You start to lose track of what they even are, how many you have, and much less how to find them. And so I had to come up with a way to organize all of these into one document so that I could, number one, even know what I had to work with, and number two, be able to share them in my marketing materials or help my customers if they had a question. So I want to walk you behind the scenes of this Excel document and the kinds of stuff that I have inside of it. So here's what it looks like. And you can see that I have four different categories. I have Shared Legacy Farms, I have Digital Farmer, Lead Pages, and Affiliate Links. So let me walk you through the Shared Legacy Farms section first. So there were a few different scenarios that were happening. I would have people reach out to me, customers or prospects, and they would say things to me like, um, I can't find the link to your online store. What's the link again? Or, hey, I really liked that video you did a week ago, but I can't find the link for it. Can you remind me where it is? Or they might say, hey, I would love to read um, that blog post. I remember you talked about how you can use kale, but I don't remember what the blog post was. Can you show me where it was? Okay, I would get questions like that. And the old way of dealing with it was that I would have to go back into my Facebook group, search for it, find the link, scrape it, and then put it in the comments or send it as an email. And that was just taking a lot of time. So I said, I gotta figure out another way to do this. And that's where this database ended up coming in really, really useful. So I have a few different sections. Um, first of all, I have what I call the important links. These are the ones that I go to a lot, the, the, the really big, off, most frequently asked questions. So people will often say, hey, you know, what's that link to the SL Farms Membership Academy? I think I wanna join it. And so, you know, instead of me having to go and find it here and then scrape it, I can just go to this database, look it up, and I can pull it off right here on the right hand side. Um, what's my CSA sign up link? What's my YouTube channel link? Okay, these are where I kind of put those really popular items. Um, but another frequently asked question is uh, blog posts. So um, for example, the eight ways to use up lots of tomatoes. Maybe I get an email from someone that they're like, I have so many tomatoes, I don't even know what to do with them. Or it's in the heat of the season and I know tomatoes are coming out of people's ears and I remembered that I wrote a blog post about it last year. And so I'm just gonna, um, you know, go back and find this blog post. Now I could take the long way and go look it up and find it here, or I could just look it up here inside of my database and and find the link right here. So um, blog posts are another giant category in here that anytime I write a blog post, I write the title, I say the date that I posted it, and then I've got the URL address in its own column as well. Um, another common thing that I uh, put in here are PDFs. I make a ton of cheat sheets. You can see I've got things like an Instant Pot recipe book. I've got my canning peaches PDF guide. Um, let me look, show you a couple that are up here. I have my formula for a basic chili. This is a seven page um, kind of cheat sheet with recipes. I have my popular beginner's guide to CSA ebook, um, which is something that I give to all of my members that kind of teaches them how to become a great CSA master. So I've got these really awesome documents like this, and I want to be able to quickly just share them with people, or if I want to write, let's say, an email sequence to uh, try to sell my product, I can put these links in those emails and give the stuff away for free. And I can easily know what I have to even give away. Um, and I also know how to find those links really quickly when I have such a document as this. Okay, so I have a ton of PDFs. You can see I have a lot. I have all my veggie eBooks here listed as well. Um, but then another thing that I do is video. I do a lot of videos. So 
Here, for example, is my dehydrating hot peppers video on my farm's YouTube channel. So whenever I make a video inside my Facebook group, I will download it and put it on my computer and then I'll upload it. If I have to edit it, I will. Then I'll upload it into Vimeo and into YouTube, sometimes just a Vimeo. And I'll scrape the links, the URL links, which are up here in the URL bar. And I'll put them in this database right next to the title of the video so that I can easily find it in the future. Um, so this is, again, a great way to keep track of what you have so that you can repurpose it and use it again. I also give out a weekly newsletter during the season. Um, I have a recipe PDF that goes out and I have a um, what's in your box illustrated PDF guide and each of those three things gets uploaded into my website and then I take the link and I put it here in this document. Now you may be wondering how do you get that link from your website? Let me show you how that works. So here's my media library inside WordPress. This is the back end of WordPress in the dashboard and you can find your media library right here on the left, it says media. You'll click on this word library, and this is what should come up. You'll have a bunch of pictures. If you upload pictures, they'll show up as images like this. But then whenever you see these icons, those are actually PDF files. So when I click on, let's say, the Chili Formula PDF that I showed you earlier, if I click on that, this is the URL right here. This is how I scrape it. I'll just take this, I'll double select it, I'll hit Command Copy on my Mac. And then I'll take that and bring it over here to my Excel document and do Command V and drop it right into my cell. And now I have that URL for that particular document. This is a great way to keep track of PDFs and eBooks and anything like that. All right. So that is, uh, those are the basic categories that I have inside of my Excel document. I also want to talk about lead pages. So what is a lead page? Well, a lead page is referring to an online form. Let me show you a few examples. Um, I use a, a lead page builder, a landing page builder called Lead Pages to help me build these. These are the subscribe forms. So here's a, a, a subscribe form where people can pre-order veggies for market pickup. They can get on the list and then we'll let them know every week what's going to be for sale and they can pre-order in the store. So I have a really beautiful looking form. If they give me their first name and email and they click on this button, they're going to be able to subscribe to that and they'll get on my email list. Here's another one. This is um, a lead magnet for the CSA Harvest Calendar. This is my top performing lead magnet for my CSA uh, to pull in new prospects. This shows them what's going to be in their box more or less during the season. Um, I have this particular three-part video series as a lead magnet for my CSA as well, which is a, is CSA right for you, where I talk through the questions they need to ask themselves. You can see they have to subscribe to gain access. And then I've got my crock pot challenge if they want to get uh, an email every day with a different crock pot recipe for 21 days and learn some tips about crock pot cooking, they can subscribe here. These are all different ways for me to build my list. And I have all of these inside of my landing page builder lead pages. This is a huge part of my marketing machine and I have over 40 of these now. And once you hit that like more than five lead pages, you start to lose track of what they all are. And I was beginning to forget that I even had certain lead pages. So that's where this database comes in really handy because I have this tab called lead pages and it reminds me in the description section, it kind of reminds me, oh, I have an A to Z guide. Oh, that's right. That's really popular. And here is the handle for it, sharedlegacyfarms.com forward slash A to Z. That's where people would go if they want to subscribe. So this is a really handy tool. I also have affiliate links. So there are some products that I promote, like I've talked about ConvertKit with you and Lead Pages. Those are my two really big uh, marketing machine engines that help me and that I absolutely love. So I really talk those up. But I don't talk about those with my CSA. But I have some other things that um, I want my customers to buy through Amazon affiliates. So for example, there's a corn cutter that uh, I use from Pampered Chef every year. And so I always promote that when it comes like July, I start talking about it and I share it with them uh, through my website link. Hey, here's the uh, link to that Amazon affiliate product. So that's another way for me to get a small amount of income, but I keep track of what all of those products are in this affiliate link section. So these are 
uh, the primary tools that I use to help me organize all of my marketing assets. They have been a game changer because when I need to sit down and write an email sequence, for instance, if I'm going to write a sales drip campaign and I want to give away some of these products, some of these PDFs and cheat sheets to kind of tease people and show them what what's so amazing about the Academy, I can easily do that because I know what's in there. I can find those links fast. Or if I want to share a video training and kind of walk people through, here's something I want to teach you. I can easily do that. So this is a great tool to use when I'm building my sales sequences to promote other products. I like to use it when I'm writing my emails, my weekly email. If I can't think of something to talk about, I'll go back and look at my archives and see what I've done in the past and maybe resurrect it and repurpose it. Um, I like to put these links in certain places on my website when I'm writing a blog post. I can insert a video from the past and encourage them to watch it or I can have a link in my navigation bar that takes people right to one of these lead pages and forms for instance. So there are a ton of ways for me to make use of this information. I love being able to go to a source of truth like this and find all the assets that I've ever created in one place. So I encourage you to create something like this. If you have a lot of content that you've already created, go back, take the time to go back through it all and document what they are, where they are, put it into a document like this. And moving forward, commit to keeping this up to date. So anytime you write a new blog post, anytime you upload a PDF, anytime you download uh, a new video off of Facebook and put it on YouTube, keep track of that information and put it in here. This one thing has saved my butt and it has really given me a lot of opportunities. Now I have so many things that I can use to help me promote and I don't have to waste time looking for them because they're all in one place. A really great hack. I hope you found this helpful. If you liked this video, please hit like, share your comments below, and please subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell so you can be notified of future trainings like this one. Thanks for joining me, guys.